new vlog today we're actually gonna go head over to the R&D department we're actually here right now um, we're gonna be looking at our Audi R8 and Lamborghini V10 uh, intake manifold that's a billet piece so the stock intake manifold is actually made of quite a bit of plastics and it works for the application for the car um, but this billet piece is is much more in-depth and I think it looks gorgeous compared to the stock one so we're gonna go ahead inside, we're gonna be talking to Brian, and we're gonna go over the whole process on how this intake manifold was created. So let's go in and say what up. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Oh, hey, didn't see you there. <laughs> oh, hey. So I just told everybody we're going to be uh, looking at this billet intake manifold. Neat. Yeah, so you down to show us the process that was created. Let's do it. All right, so I was actually just uh, telling everybody on here about the intake manifold a little bit, how like the stock one is, is kind of made with plastic, I guess yep. you could say, or a type of plastic. I picked them up the other day to get some shots of them, and it was kind of surprising how light they were. But I'm kind of curious, along with everyone else, why was it created? Like, what was the whole idea behind creating this intake manifold? So there's a couple reasons. Generally, this piece is made for vacuum. It's a naturally aspirated motor. It's not boosted, so there's not really a lot of load design to be put into that intake manifold. So as you go up and boost, you can reach certain burst pressures. So that's job number one, is just sustained boost. The piece is actually pretty well designed. It's got Nice runner transitions, nice bell horns. It's got port injection, so it is a kind of a two-piece arrangement. There are some other things we want to integrate, pressure sensing, additional volume, things like that, but mostly we want to be able to handle all the boost reliably all day long and also look pretty Gucci too. Because like you said, they're, they're meant for naturally aspirated cars. They're not meant for boost. Yep. So is there a limit to those manifolds? So I think it's kind of like in the teens, okay. somewhere around there. Um, I could be wrong. I'd have to go double check. So, uh, what's the uh, what's the first step in designing a V10 intake manifold? Well, first step, along with pretty much anything, is you want to get an idea of what you're working with. So, we would jump in and scan everything in place with the car fully assembled, so that way you can reference the location of everything as you disassemble it. So, we would go in. We'd have our Romer arm here. So you can kind of jump in, and just start getting, you want to get like the manifold, you want to get as many flats and rounds as you can to reference things. Places like this crossbar are really good because that's a good kind of solid reference as the car comes apart. You'll, uh, you'll be able to go back and assemble all the scan data into like one piece so you can have everything together. You can cut, remove, kind of visualize everything you need to. So you would start with getting everything assembled and then you start taking it apart piece by piece. Um, since we are building motors here, you know, we'll get things like the exact cylinder spacing so we know you know a bore is exactly this far mm -hmm. apart um, all your mounting points your port geometry is very important not only the the actual face of it where the surfaces will mate between the manifold and the motor but the actual angle that that port goes in gotcha. um, you can have a port that won't be perpendicular to its face it might be kind of like this so if you make your manifold come in like that your intake air is taking an abrupt turn you get a pressure That's drop. less efficiency. Yeah, it's less efficient. So you want to make sure that you accommodate and you have a nice smooth geometry um, going into the combustion chamber. So with this laser scanner, um, how is the information kind of relayed from, from the laser scanner arm to, I guess, your software? So basically this little guy takes a laser and we can just kind of get like a little basic. It'll just bounce that light off and then that will... Oh, wow. Okay. That's really sweet. 
So that'll kind of, you know, it turns into just simply a bunch of points. What we'll do is we'll collect all our data here on the laptop, and then we go back to our desktop, we process the data and do like a more solid mesh, a surface or even a solid, and then we can bring that over to SolidWorks where we do our design work and creating the parts that we're gonna design for the car. So this stock piece, um, pretty basic volumetric shape, but again, the details are kind of what matters. The, and of course, the really important stuff is you want your throttle body locations, on the underside, you have your interface, and this is essentially two-thirds of the runner assembly. Below, there's an intermediate set of runners, and they hold the high-pressure fuel rails, and these are the low-pressure fuel rails and injectors. And we actually make a nice little engineered piece that goes in between, and it reinforces the seal between these two runner sets. Again, this was designed as NA, not to hold pressure, so the seals that go on as factory don't have the backing necessary to hold in positive manifold pressure so we make a little l ring billet piece it goes on the uh, bottom set of runners this bolts on and then you have a pretty complex geometry of all the mounting holes for each side the shape of this the angle of it the transition up to the bell horns which actually have really nice formed bell horns as stock um, some more of the complicated stuff in this is all these like little fittings here for evap um crankcase ventilation stuff like that so we do include all of these fittings they can't they're they are like little billet pieces that go into an o-ring ball so you can plug them if you want to do like a straight up racing application eliminate a lot of stuff you can do that if you want to run it on a stock street car and still work with like obd and emissions all that stuff you can plug them right in, it all fits the stock pieces. Um, if you wanna get super cute, you can see here our prototype alpha fuel rails. Oh, okay. These do work on the stock manifold and our billet manifold. So then you can you know, put big ol' injectors, run all the fuel, that mm -hmm. kind of fun stuff. Um, um, so that's the stock piece. Yeah, it's just crazy to me. Like once again, like you said, it's only pulling vacuum, but like literally guys, this is all pretty much it's a i mean it's a very hard plastic like look at this that's one hand you know it's not yeah, it's a light piece how much do you think that weighs we'll call it eight and a half yeah it's it's not that much so how about we head over to the software side and kind of see what the, what's going on in the computers sounds like a point let's let's grab the software key and of course put the scanner away so one really cool thing about this is as you can see what he's doing right now it's actually on air like not air suspension but it's on air jacks I guess you could say there's two tanks that are in there and the steel base. Yeah, we built this. Um, it was kind of like a generation before me, but it makes it really easy for getting this thing around the shop. Obviously, you know, when you're scanning, you want this to not move. The software assumes that this is fixed in space and it assumes your workpiece is fixed in space. So if one of those two moves, either you better know exactly how it moved or you got to start over, gotcha. which both are difficult. Which this is Design X. Oh, okay. So uh, we scan in and process our scan data with Design X. So this is what's called a mesh. So this is after we've taken all of our um, scan points and put them together. So for example, like this. That's a lot of information. You're obviously not going to get all in one shot, which is why you can see like the frame rails out here, here. These weren't really necessary for development of the manifold, but they were necessary to line everything up because that's a fixed point on the car. Gotcha. So when you scan it in the car, you hit that. You take the manifold off, you scan your high pressure pumps, your engine, you hit those again. Then you come in here and you can put it all together. You can see what kind of room you have. You know, For example, if you are gonna do a fuel rail, can I put a fitting back here? Do I need a fitting there? or what have you, just you you know a lot more and you can proceed and get a pretty good prototype design printed up that'll fit well. So that's Design X, and then we jump into SolidWorks. Well, what you want to do is you want to move into um, SolidWorks geometry as quickly as you can. If you're always working off the scan, there's, there's certain imperfections, it's not precise. In SolidWorks, for example, a plane matches up with another plane at you know exactly zero degrees. but again like this guy this guy this guy this guy 
These are all O-ring bossed in, so you can leave these on for all the stock hoses, lines, or you can plug them pretty easily. If um, you don't need them. Exactly. Yeah. So like people with straight up race cars might not be using that kind of stuff. Or, you know, you could put, you know, your pressure sensing or whatever, you know, blast some nitrous in there. I don't know. Again, this wasn't really originally designed as like, oh, the stock manifold's terrible. We need to make a better one and we're gonna make more power exclusively with this. It's we need something to hold the boost. Yeah. Um but you do get the opportunity to make some improvements in, you know, geometries and volume, so as you test, as you tune, as you learn more about the platform, you know, there's potential gains to be had there, but we can't speak to them directly right now. So literally right next door, one door over. You guys have probably seen this in the AMS moving vlog, but this is the 3D printed room. <laughs> Massive 3D printers right here. Yeah, so originally well, we printed the, little guys, yeah, the V10 manifold on these Prusas, and so you had to like go in software, chop it, and then print it out piece by piece. And we ended up buying the Modix so that we could just print it out in one shot. And that allowed us, A, to get it in one piece so it's a little bit more accurate, it's all together. But it frees these smaller guys up for other projects. So your overall capacity and print time drops down. So if you, know, if you have an intake manifold hogging up all four printers all week, you can't do a little fitting, you can't do a test piece. If you know some of the guys in fab or kitting or whatever want a fixture and they needed to get product out, you can't do that. Well, so obviously we're not going to show you guys this actually. I mean, we have a few clips of that they've taken, you know, over time of the prints on here. But like you just said, it might take a whole week to print the manifold. So we're not going to do that. But they already do have one that has already been printed that was used for the test fitting. So we're going to go head back into the shop and we'll take a look at that real quick and uh, do kind of like a little mini mock up. Yeah, so these we kind of grew in three different sections. You see like little keys there that allows you to line it up nicely and then we use some glue get it adhered sometimes like a little bit of tape and so you'll get everything printed a lot of the times like you'll you can tap these holes you'll have to clear in some things you know pick off like support material so that if this prints straight up it's well supported but if you printed it like that for example these would sag over so there's like extra material that gets printed to hold everything nice. okay. so you have to clean that off prep the print assemble it and a lot of the times like this is when the techs get really heavily involved because they'll say like listen you know if we're going to go put this together in production then you know this needs to line up better or i need to be able to get a tool in here or hey i need a little groove right there mm -hmm. makes it easier to put the o-ring in we won't cut them it'll seal nicer etc cetera, etc cetera. um or they might say like hey you know you got some extra material is there a reason for that no i forgot to cut that out in software okay we'll cut it out because it's just wait it's set in there so Get it fully assembled, then you go ahead and pop it in the car. So we have the covers on the cylinders right now, but you would go ahead, you'd pop it in, fully assembled, get all your bolts in. We've been doing a little bit of fuel system development. So, so yeah, you're actually able to like fully mount them in with yeah. you know, the hardware. Yeah, this isn't like the most legit demonstration, but you get the idea. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, like you were saying, we got the covers on the runners right now, so they don't fit perfectly, but this at least gives you guys, you know, a good idea at, at what goes on here, so. Once everything's tight in the car and constrained, you realize like, oh, it's super difficult to bend that line. I need to go ahead and move my fitting, and sometimes that'll bring you all the way back to the drawing board. Sometimes it's reprinting one piece. Um, but again, it's, you get into a little bit of iteration, which again is why it's super important to get as much information as you can up front and work with the people that know a lot more about working on the car than you do. Um, yeah, then you get a good piece coming out. This is kind of like the uh, the matte, clear anodized finished um, piece. Yeah. These will be offered like this, or you can get it custom anodized. You can do rainbow runners. You can do whatever you want. Call the sales boys for that. I just make it fit. I think what's pretty neat is like the, the way the bell horns are done, it's super smooth. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked how that came out. Gaskets from Kometic fit awesome. They did a really good job with that. It's actually a, it's a rubber coated metal piece. But they made it for us custom. We sent them a drawing um, and then they sent pieces back, pop them on, they fit perfect, they're awesome. Hold plenty of pressure and you run all the boost. It's just crazy to see from, you know, idea to conception and like the process of making this work. It's really impressive. It's not the shortest process, but 
it is done right. It's all done in house, so it's easy for us to respond, adjust, price competitively, stock, distribute, all the things that make AMS and Alpha Performance successful is, you know, all those little tiny steps you take along the way to get it done right. How long did this whole process actually take, do you think? Good year. Wow. <laughs> It's a lot of work right there for sure. You know, there's like little little tiny things you change along the way. Um, but you know, this has already been on the dyno. It's already made loads of power. It's gonna be making loads more. We're pretty stoked.